Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm here today with the 185th episode of Weekly Poker Hand. Today we are on the Stone Bubble in the $10,000 buy-in six-handed World Series of Poker events. So we are probably going to get in the money unless we screw something up. We're playing 2,500, 5,000 with a 500 ante. We are playing 400,000 deep effective, so about 80 big blinds, which is probably a very healthy stack. I see a stack at the table with only 40,000, so we are in great shape. That said, the goal is not to get in the money. I think a lot of people play poker tournaments thinking, okay, I just really want to get in the money. But getting in the money, especially when in the money is $15,000 over a $10,000 buy-in, you're only winning $5,000, which, you know, 5,000 bucks is a lot of money, but it's not actually a lot of buy-ins. It's 0.5 buy-ins. And if your goal in the tournament is to win 0.5 buy-ins, you're not doing it right. Your goal needs to be to win the tournament or, you know, I don't really have a goal, um, the goal is to go there and play my absolute best. That's the goal. And whatever result you get, you should be able to live with. Um, anyway, here we are. I'm not thinking, oh, I really want to get into the money or I really want to push the bubble around or anything like that. I'm just trying to play good poker. All right, so here are the cutoff, who I do not know raises to 12,000 out of his 400,000 stack. I'm in the big blind with ace of spades, nine of clubs. And I do think I need to defend this hand. I'm never really a big fan of defending a big card and a little card from out of position, offsuit variety like king four off suit. I'd probably just fold that on the bubble given our opponent really doesn't need to be opening too wide in the spot given the big stack is in the big blind. So maybe that makes him tighten up a bit or maybe just doesn't care. It's tough to know. It's always tough to know about what your opponents have going on. And so, you know, you use whatever little cues you can to try to figure it out. Like if this guy is new to the table and he's raised three out of the first eight hands, well, he's probably playing too aggressively. If he's wearing a business suit and has folded the first three hands, maybe he's a little bit tight. You don't know for sure, but it's all we have to go off of. So anyway, I'm going to call this ace-nine offsuit. I don't think we need to three-bet it. We could three-bet it. I don't think it'd be insane, but sure, let's just call and see a flop. It comes king, eight, six, two clubs. I have the nine of clubs. I check, and I'm just going to check fold here, but it checks behind, which is great. Turns an ace. Hello. So now we have the best hand a lot. However, if you think about the range that my opponent should check behind, that's going to be a lot of hands like ace-queen, ace-jack, and ace-10, right? An eight will very often bet the flop. A king will very often bet the flop. Maybe a six doesn't, but if he has a six, it's either seven-six or six-five, or it is ace-six, which is two pair. Um, same thing, if he has an eight, usually it's going to be reasonable eight or ace-eight if he does decide to check those. So the ace is actually pretty decent for my opponent. And not so decent for me in general. Obviously, it significantly improved my specific hand. But um, more often than not, this is going to be way better for my opponent. Um, someone in the comment section of this hand actually asked me, why didn't you bet the turn? Seems like a great hand. But yeah, my exact hand is pretty good. But my range should not be so good here. I mean, I obviously could have the aces, but my opponent has the better aces. So given he has the better aces, I should be checking. So I do check. And I'm just going to check call if he bets the turn. Pretty easy check call. Does go check, check, though. All right. Now on the river, it's a king. Should we value better? Should we check again? Same person said, why didn't you bet the river? Because now, what's he going to call me with? If he has an eight or a six, those are the only hands that I can reasonably get called by that I am happy against. I guess he could have pocket queens through nines or any pocket pair. But even then, he may just fold. Uh, I think a lot of amateur players look at this spot and they just think, okay, you have a marginal made hand. We're trying to get called by something marginal. So let's bet 6,000 into the 31,000 pot. And, you know, sure. I don't think that's terrible logic. The thing is though, against good players, and we are playing a $10,000 buy-in six-handed tournament, which is people who are usually pretty good. Um, we should probably consider checking here because if my opponent does have Queens, he may just fold. But if he has a hand like Queen Jack, he may bluff. Also, my opponent may be smart enough to check back with a king on the flop. And if he had a king that he checked back on the flop, he'll certainly check back the turn, right? Because the turn's terrible for a king. So if he did raise a hand like king nine suited or king 10 off suit, I think those are great hands to check back the flop with. If you actually remember back to the exact episode from last week, um, I did this similar thing where I checked back top pair and I induced the opponent to bluff off on all three streets. Perhaps here, my opponent just had a king and was hoping he would induce me to bluff off on the turn, but then he just got a terrible turn, so now he has to check back. So he could certainly have a king. I definitely think there is some value to be had here, but not a lot. Um, if I do bet the river and I get raised, I'm going to hate the spot. 
and I guess I'm supposed to fold. I sure hate bet folding against good players, mainly because I know good players are capable of bluffing. And if they get the vibe that my 6,000 or 12,000 bet on the river is particularly marginal, they just may pounce on it with a wide range. And I, and then you start leveling yourself, right? If you think your opponent's going to be bluffing you a lot, well, now I'm supposed to bet 12,000 and then call off a 50,000 raise on my ace nine. And who knows if that's right? <laughs> um, you, you have to be very aware of what you're inducing from, well, any player. A little bit less so good players, actually, because a lot of good players just try to stick to game theory optimal strategies against other good players. But um, some players, if they sense weakness, they'll just pounce. They'll just do it. <laughs> so if you induce your opponent to bluff you, you have to be willing to bet and then call it off, which clearly that's... Imagine if I knew I could bet 6,000 and make my opponent raise to 50,000 every time with all of his bluffs, then sure, that plays great. But I don't know that. It's hard to know that kind of thing. Realize you don't really know what your opponents are thinking very often. Unless you play with them all the time, and this hands from a poker tournament, so we're not playing with people we play with all the time. So anyway, I decided to check, and this is a really easy check call. We've clearly induced bluffs by checking three times. My hand is great, and we're just going to check call. And if, if we if we lose, we lose. That's fine. But probably we're going to win. So I do check. My opponent bets 15,000. We have the easiest call in the world, and sure enough, he has king four suited. You don't really expect to see king four, but he does have a king, and I think that we both played our hands well. I think a lot of amateur players can't get their mind around the fact that my opponent checked behind on the flop, and they can't get their mind around the fact that I checked the turn and the river. But I think all of these plays were just good. Both of us have marginal made hands, at least until the river, and we should play our hands accordingly. So it's a fun spot. I, I think um, I think it illustrates this good play by both players. My opponent's open was maybe a little bit too loose, but beyond that, I think, I think it's just a very solid hand. So that's going to get for this episode of Weekly Poker Hand. Again, I want to thank you all for being here. Thank you for sticking with me and watching this podcast or listening to this podcast. I appreciate it. And if you enjoy it, tell your friends because, you know, share the wealth, share the knowledge and help out other people. I started making this podcast because my students wanted more free content from me. So I'm trying to give it away. You guys give it away too. Thank you very much. Have a great week and I will talk to you next time.